Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a Dirac Live calibrator. In this video, I want to talk to you about the brand new REL 1508 Predator subwoofer that I've had here now for a good few weeks that I've been spending time reviewing. Now this is gonna be part one of the review. There's still some more things I need to test with the subwoofer, but I've really been putting it for its paces over the last few weeks. I'm really confident to sit here now and tell you quite a bit about it. Rail Acoustics 1508, the Predator subwoofer is the flagship subwoofer from the company's HT range, the home theater range. And I wanna start this video and review there because if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you know who Rail or Rail Acoustics are. Most of you have probably owned at least one Rail subwoofer in your lifetime, if not, multiple rail subs because they have been making and selling subwoofers for about 30 years which is really astonishing when you think about it in the modern market i think there is a clear divide between enthusiasts that want a dedicated home theater subwoofer and then you have the other audiophile enthusiasts that want a subwoofer for music purposes. Now, Rail Acoustics have generally built products that kind of bridge that gap, that are solutions designed to achieve both of those goals. And Rail Acoustics themselves encourage video and audio files to set up their systems the way Dolby recommended many years ago by having all of your speaker channels work as full range, which generally means those speakers will need a subwoofer to extend their output to make them full range. But the creation of the sub satellite system and its global success has seen many home cinema enthusiasts really ignore that advice and use their AV processors or AV receivers as crossovers and have the LFE channel do all the bass for all the speaker channels. Now I've grown up setting up systems the latter way. I've spent about the last 10 years working on getting the very best performance from a system set up that way and it's very difficult for me to see a different way of doing it. However, if we do not embrace change, how can we ever move forward? Now I want to draw a massive line underneath that intro and let's get talking about the specifications of the 1508. The specification of the Predator subwoofer is an interesting one because as I mentioned, the subwoofer market has been very aggressively changing over recent years and subwoofers have been getting bigger and bigger and more and more powerful. So when I initially saw the spec for the 1508, I wasn't wowed. I will admit the 15 inch driver did instantly get my attention, but only an 800 watt amplifier in a flagship subwoofer some of Rail Acoustics competitors have been making small, sealed, single box subwoofers with that much amplifier power and more for a number of years. So on paper at least, the Rail Predator seems like it's already behind its competition. But it wasn't until I spent some time with the 1508 that I realized I need to dig a little deeper than that initial specification because there's obviously things there that are more important. That 15 inch driver, it's made from a mixture of glass fiber with the center area being carbon fiber. This makes the driver really stiff and really light. Rel have managed to make a 15 inch driver work in what is essentially a very small cabinet or enclosure. It's less than 20 inches wide and 20 inches tall and around 17 inches deep, which is a small cabinet for a 15 inch driver. And it's a pretty substantial thing when you have a smaller listening room and very tight space such as I do, but still want really big bass. The Predator is not that heavy either. I was expecting to need to lay in bed for a week to recover from picking it up and trying to squeeze it in the gap I have between my speaker and my wall. Maybe I was just having a strong day, but the 1508 didn't seem anywhere near as heavy as I was expecting. The spec sheet says it weighs 36 kilograms from a guess. I would have said about 25 kilograms. Maybe that's just because of these guns. Is the weight of a subwoofer important? I'm not sure, but I think that's just another area where the 1508 is defying my expectation. It's rail say that the big 15 inch driver also has a really big magnet structure, which allows the speaker to move forwards and backwards three inches in either direction. And they say the 1508 conservatively outputs 114 decibels of bass in their lab conditions. 
They also say the internal bracing is a very clever design because not only does it brace the cabinet, but it also supports the heavy magnet. The amplifier, the 800 watt amplifier is a class D design, but Rails say they use a traditional power supply with it. By traditional, I assume they mean toroidal transformer based power supply, in which case the 1.2 kilowatts of power supply that they use is a pretty massive thing. And I can only think of one other range of subwoofers that use this type of power supply and they cost at least three times what the rail do. And I think that's really, really interesting. There are a couple of other interesting things to talk about with the rail 1508, both on the top and on the bottom. On the top, there is a 25 millimeter thick plate which is there to help brace the cabinet and also help support that big magnet structure. On the bottom, instead of using spikes or feet, Rel have installed solid aluminium rails, which not only look cool, they are there when you want to stack the Rel 1508 subwoofers up to three high for some serious base nuttiness and who doesn't love a bit of nuttiness from their base. On the rear of the subwoofer, we have what I would class as a traditional amplifier plate with all the controls that we might expect. One thing to point out or of note is that the 1508 has both analog inputs and analog outputs so that if you do want to stack the Predator subwoofers, you can daisy chain them together from a signal point of view. You can also use RHEL's HT air wireless system which will create a wireless link between the subwoofer and your AV receiver or processor which alleviates the need to use a cable. Now I haven't tested that properly yet. I've been using the 1508 with a really high quality subwoofer cable and I'll tell you about that cable in future videos. I'll also talk to you about the wireless system and how that compares to the cable. So let's talk about sound quality or bass quality from the Predator subwoofer. Now I could show you my in-room measured space response from the 1508. However, it wouldn't look too different to other subwoofers that I've had in my room because that is just the effects of my room. And I don't think it would be overly useful. Now I set up the rail subwoofer using my Arcam AVR850 and obviously Dirac Live. Now for Dirac Live, I set the 1508 up initially using my traditional target curve or setup method. And then a couple of weeks later, I started using a new experimental target curve that I'm playing around with at the moment and getting some seriously good results from. And for context, I like a lot of bass. My room with all the acoustic treatment and a large amounts of absorption allow me to have a lot of bass that can stay tight and controlled and focused for the most part. And my last or reference subwoofer setup was two SVS SB13 Ultra subwoofers that were always going hard. So really my comparison is two SVS Ultra subwoofers compared to just one Rel 1508 Predator. The SVS subwoofers have smaller drivers but more amplifier power on paper. Both the SVS and the Rels are about the same physical size, but the SVS in the hand feel quite a bit heavier. Talking about the bass quality from the 1508, I've got to be honest, I really wasn't expecting too much from the 1508, but boy was I wrong, 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 wrong. Well done Rel, you have made a really good subwoofer with the 1508, which is genuine competition for the other big bass, single driver, small box, sealed subwoofers that are out there on the market. Genuine competition to all of them. For big movie effect soundtracks, you know, the big bass tactile stuff that we all know and we all love is as good as any other sealed single driver or an equivalent subwoofer that I have experienced so far. What I like most about the 1508 subwoofer is the fact that the bass doesn't overstay its welcome. It's there, then it's gone, then it's there again, and then it's gone again. You don't get that kind of bass frobbiness that you can get with a lot of other smaller, especially smaller sealed box subwoofers. The 1508 is also big in output, much bigger than I was expecting. And with one of them on its own, it's been providing ample more than enough bass foundation 
for me, my review system. Anybody that's ever been and had a demonstration of my system or had a system set up by me will know the kind of base level that I'm talking about. In terms of base presence, there is a lot or excellent base presence in the lower regions, in the 50 hertz and below region. Things rattling in your room is not a sign of good bass, but it can be an indicator to just how much lower bass a subwoofer is outputting. Bass explosions are fast, tight, and impactful from the 1508. I'm thinking about the recent release for the 4K Aquaman UHD Blu-ray. That disc has got an amazing soundtrack. There are some really impressive explosions, especially if you use the DTS Master HD soundtrack. And with the Real Predator subwoofer set up well, it's been thrilling watching that movie from the explosive soundtrack point of view. And again, it's for the reasons that I just mentioned. The bass is there and then it's gone. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't have that kind of throb that you sometimes get with the subwoofers, which means it doesn't mask the transient clarity of the effect. It's not all been perfect so far it seems that bass above 80 hertz can be quite audibly directional from the 1508. An 80 hertz crossover seems quite a nice sweet spot for the 1508 which I'm sure will be fine for a lot of you out there. For me I think a good home cinema system needs a lot of bass, a lot of foundation, a lot of support for all the other channels within a system and when we're talking Dolby Atmos we're talking you know 11 other speakers that's a lot of speakers that the subwoofer needs to underpin. To my amazement just one rel 1508 subwoofer has been satisfying me someone who's ultra critical about the amount of bass output and foundation it's been providing for my dolby atmos review system the rel acoustics predator 1508 subwoofer costs 1599 pounds which i think is very aggressively priced because you get a lot of bass output for your money, you get a lot of good bass quality for your money, you get a lot of fast, detailed, agile, and even tactile bass for your money. My final thoughts so far of the Row Acoustics Predator, the 1508 subwoofer, is actually of a complete turnaround situation. I was really and genuinely not expecting the 1508 to deliver anywhere near the level of performance, bass quality, and just base goodness that I've been getting from it. Row Acoustics, you've done a great job. I'm really looking forward to spending more time with the 1508 and just enjoying it as I watch different movies and obviously testing out the other things that I mentioned. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been useful. There'll be more on the Predator coming soon and more on the new Dolby Atmos review system that I've been installing and setting up. There's videos coming for them very very soon if you've enjoyed this video make sure you hit that thumbs up button also make sure you go and visit our website i'm going to be coming back very soon with lots of interesting stuff so make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell for a special prize right i'll be seeing you all soon thanks very much for watching take care